Welcome back, sewists. Today we're working on a PDF pattern. This is a Amale. I hope I'm saying that right. I looked it up online. According to the Goog box, it is a Zulu word that means beautiful, which I think is lovely. However, the pronunciation was beyond my Western speaking tongue. I didn't get it right. Amale is close, but it's not really. So this is a PDF pattern. It's one you can print out. Um, I'm going to put the link below so you can go to the Etsy shop where I got this and get it. It is by Wild Seeds Pattern, um, designed by Samantha Page. The model looks amazingly elegant. When I looked at what the pattern was made out of, it, this is a very straightforward, fairly simple, A-line shaped dress. Traced it off, so the fabric we're gonna use today, this is for knit. This, and I went shopping in my stash, I bought this fabric a while ago when we first moved here. So almost, almost two years ago, a year and a half ago, I bought this fabric. I bought it because it had a nice overall floral pattern. I didn't really pay attention, it's covered in butterflies, but it's a nice, easy t-shirt knit weight. And since I wanna try the pattern out, I don't wanna go buy more fabric. Shopping my stash, I'm going to use it up. I like the weight, the texture, it's slightly heathered, everything about it I like. It also has the right amount of stretch. So we're going to sew this up in this sort of corally colored t-shirt weight fabric. When you go to trace this off, it has a generous size range. It is very long. So when you see me later, I have cut off six inches of the length of my pattern. It says for my height, I need three and a quarter. And that would be true if I wanted it to completely be floor length. I'm not, I'm going but more like ankle length. I've got, got cut it a little shorter. It's just more practical for my life because I, this is a dress I'll probably wear daily. I also, I saw some people who've sewn this up and belted it, very cute belted. The one change I'm making besides shortening it is I'm going to add a pocket. This pattern has center panels and side panels, so sort of like princess lines. So you could put a pocket in the princess line or the side seam. I think I'm gonna do it in the side seam, but both would be acceptable for this style of pattern. It does not come with a pocket, and I think it's mainly because it's a knit and how they sew it. So I'll show you how to do add a pocket. That's pretty much what I do. Almost every project that comes without a pocket, I show how to add one. So I've drafted a little pocket to go with it. I will figure out where to cut it in here, and we're gonna get a pocket in. So let me show you the cutting. Before I start the cutting, if you want to make that adorable dress, I'll put a link in the iCard and down below. This was a very recent sew. It's actually a two-parter. And if you want to make the cute top I'm wearing, it's another video, and I'll also put that down below. Okay, so I have three yards, a generous three yards here, 60 inch wide, and I have traced off all of my pattern pieces. They are long, as you can see, and that's with me taking six inches off. I have a two inch marking on my hemline also, and that two inch marking is um, if I wanted to go just a tiny bit shorter and be almost ballet length. Those were the, the only changes I've made to this pattern. Um, you have one piece on the fold, and that is your center front panel. Now I have a pattern, so I'm double checking that it's not directional. I do not want my butterflies upside down, and it's not. They have butterflies going both directions, so I can flip my pattern pieces, which is important for this. If you buy a directional fabric, um, you can't flip your pattern pieces. For my center front, I have folded this to get it as even as possible, and I've made sure that I don't have a real, um, distinct crease down that fold line because we sure don't want that stuck on our, our center front. And I'm gonna line up my center front one right on the fold and pin it down. And you can see these are nice A-line -li -A shapes. I like to pin because I roll, because my, my table's not that long. I don't have a super long table. We also have one more piece that goes in the front and it's our neck facing. So we've got to figure that out in there too. And it does need to have some stretch with it. This tells us gray line and stretch. The stretch needs to go around the body. Next to that, I'm flipping my center back piece so that I have the hem where the neckline is. And you can see they fit in nicely when you do that. A right and a left, which is the thing we're looking for. I'm also looking at my grain line and I'm gonna actually flip it this way also. So my grain line goes along my selvage edge. And see I have this nice strip in here that if I have to, I could lay my neckline piece in, but I definitely could get pockets out of. So 
my neckline piece is the one because I don't have that quarter of a yard. So my neckline piece is the one I'm most concerned about because of its angle. When I line it up with, with the fold, you can see how it angles way down and it's angling right into my other pattern piece. So I may have to cut it in one of these long strips between. If you are super tall, this pattern is going to be a great one for you. Okay, so now that I have everything laid out, all my huge pieces, I'm going to come back and cut my neckband piece in this strip between the two. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fudge that neckband. So I'm ready to cut and then I'll do these last two pieces I'll show you in just a minute. All right, let's discuss pockets and the front neck piece. Now I mentioned that this neck piece is very angular and when I fold my scraps over, and I was concerned about this and I was right, no matter what I do to get this directly on the fold, the angle so dramatic it comes off my fabric so I'm going to have to fudge it. So it's not changing it dramatically but it is going to be slightly different than the way they drafted the pattern and that's my own fault because I don't have that extra quarter of a yard and I'm getting this little neckband out of the scraps. I can easily get my pocket pieces. I have a pocket lined up right here, pocket, and then I can do another pocket in this piece. So I've got four pocket pieces but here is my neckline. As you can see how dramatic it's quite a swoop. So I'm fudging. I'm going to do this. So it meets perfectly at the bottom corner, but at the top, it adds almost a half inch, like it's a quarter inch on each side. It's important to match the bottom corner because this is where the dress sews on. So I'm not changing anything between the pattern pieces where they attach. But if I do that, I can get it in. We'll see how badly that alters how it fits and goes together. I know it'll go together down here. We'll see what it does up here. And there's my pocket. I'm just going to do two sets of pockets and we're ready to go. After cutting out that neckband that I said it was real important to match at the bottom, I was wrong. I went and looked at the directions and actually the neckband sews at the top and flips to the back to make a casing that then will be the... Um, where you put your elastic through actually has elastic in that neckline. So I may have made a mistake. I may need to cut another one. I'm going to get to that point and decide. I think it's going to fit mainly because it's knit and knit is forgiving. Before I start sewing, I always set up my machines and then I test this stitch. So I always take whatever fabric I'm using, I run it through the overlock if I'm using it to make sure I like the settings and it looks good. These machines, I so far I have not had to alter at all for anything I've sewn. And then I go to the sewing machine and I do the same thing with a straight stitch or a zigzag, whatever I think I'm going to be using, just to make sure that the stitch looks good and I'm pleased with it. So I've done that. I've done my little samples with my fabric and we're going to start sewing. Because we're adding a pocket, we're going to not 100% follow their directions because there's no direction for a pocket. So we're going to put together the entire front and the entire back. Then we're gonna add pockets, just so you can kind of see the how this is going to go together. This entire pattern only has quarter inch seam allowances, so it assumes you're going to be overlocking. If you don't have an overlock machine, you're going to set your sewing machine to a teeny tiny zigzag. I've shown this in lots of my videos. Length, let me look. Yeah, it's like one and a half by one, something like that. So the length is a little longer than the width. It almost looks like a straight stitch, but it has a tiny bit of give. You're less likely to get popped stitches when um, getting dressed and wearing the garment because the fabric gives and if the stitch does not, that's how you end up with holes where your stitches pop. All right. We're ready to put together our garment at the center back. I'm going to just unpin everything, put right sides together, and sew down the center back on my overlock. So here's our instructions. This is showing sewing together the center back seam and then pressing it. Here's mine. I've pinned it together. I always recommend pinning top and bottom first and then pinning in between. If you start at one end on something as long as this and pin to the other, you will get movement between your two layers and it won't match up even though you cut it out at the same time. So always pin both ends and then pin in between. Um, if you can, lay it out on a long table or, or the floor or something for pinning. That also helps keep from getting movement. We're going to head right over here and just surge it up. Now, because this has such narrow seam allowances, I think it's um, seven mil or which is about a quarter of an inch. So no surging off anything other than um, uneven or rough edges. You 
can see, I'm just letting it cut off whiskers. Make sure you take your pins out. Some knits kind of like to roll when you're sewing them, so you have to watch for that. And also watch that you don't stretch as you're sewing. You want to just leave it flat, no stretching or gathering. So now that we've done that, we're going to just open this up and press it. And then I'm going to add my side panels, my back side panels, to each side, pin them on and sew them. Here's the center back seam right here. And then I've come along and I pinned down the side panels, the back side panel. So here's one pinned on and I've pinned both of them on. I just went ahead and pinned them both at the same time. So now I'm ready to come over and I'm gonna serge them just like I did this one in the center back and press them just like I did this one. So here's the pressed seam. If you look, if you are overlocking, this is considered the right side and this is considered the wrong side. So I always press it so the right side seam is the one that shows because I think it looks prettiest. I also sew it so that I know that when I'm pressing, I'm going to press this, like these two seams are gonna to press towards this one. So I wanna make sure that this side is up for that one and that this side is up for this side so that when I press them, the right sides press the correct direction and look good. It's me being super fussy, but that is what I do. So I'm gonna get the back completely together. We're gonna to repeat this exact same process for the front. I'll just show you real quick, but I'm just gonna sit here and search for a minute. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm prepping all my pieces. I've done my center back and pressed it. I'm now pinning on my side backs. So that's right there, ready to go. And then I've come to the front. I've opened up my front piece and pressed it and I've pinned on both side panels. That's what this is. So here's my side panels pinned on both sides. It's easy to tell because these side panels have an arm's eye in them. So you can see this is the side seam. So I'm just gonna sit now and serge all of these together. Once I'm done with that I'm, and press it, I'm gonna serge the hems of the front and the back also, just so that they're finished off and then we'll be ready to move on. Here's a back completely together. I surged my hem. This is ready to press, but I'm gonna go ahead and sew my front together first and then I'll press both at the same time. All right, we have a front and a back completely sewn together, but before we do this side seam in the directions, we're going to add our pocket. There's no markings for this because it's not part of their included pattern. I have drafted my own little pocket. You can kind of see its shape. I just want to make sure it's plenty big enough for my hand and my cell phone, which it is. So I have measured down from the um, underarm here, 14 inches. That's approximately what I want. You want it below the waist just so you can get to it. It can be a little higher, a little lower. That's up to you. So I'm just measured down 14 inches, that's this pin. Then I'm going to put the top of my pocket at that pin, and you can see I've pinned my pocket on. I'm now going to go sew the pocket, I'm gonna come down a quarter of an inch, and sew and stop a quarter of an inch before I get to this edge. So I'm gonna do that for all four side seams. So I'm gonna have four of these pocket pieces, right sides down, on the side seams, and then we'll come back and do our side seams. Now to do the pockets, I am setting my um, needles down quarter inch from the edge of that bottom of the pocket or the top of the pocket. And I'm just going to serge till I get to a quarter of inch of the other side. So. Remember we have narrow seam allowance, so we don't need to be cutting off really much of anything. I'm gonna remove both pins so I don't hit them with my knife. And I'm watching at the needles. I can see the edge of my fabric. Okay, that's as far as I need to go. That's my quarter inch. And now I can 
release it. And you can see how I have just a quarter of an inch seam allowance right there at each end. And that'll help me when I'm ready to do the side seam and finish the pocket off. I'm gonna do that four times. If you're sewing this together instead of serging, just head to your sewing machine, do the tiny zigzag, start and stop a quarter of an inch from each end of that pocket if you're doing the pocket. If you're not, just skip this whole pocket thing on the timestamp, I'll meet you over at side seams. All right, we're ready to do side seams. If you aren't doing the pocket, you're going to just pin your side seam together and sew straight down, super easy. I chose to go ahead and seam finish the arm's eye here. It's going to get turned back and top stitched and you, knit doesn't fray. So if you don't seam finish, um, it's fine. It always looks nicer to have a finished edge though. So I went ahead and searched it so that when I turn this back later, that's nice and finished. I don't have any um, raw edges. So I did that. I've pinned my little um, shoulder seam, which is an inch and three quarters. So that's, I'm just gonna sew this at the sewing machine. I'm just gonna stitch it, straight stitch it on or use that micro zigzag. So I've pinned both side seams. Here's my neckline. This is the front, this is the back. And then I've pinned the side seam up to the pocket. And you can see it's just loose a little bit. And then I've pinned the pocket and then I've pinned below. So instead of sewing all the way in one continuous thing, I'm gonna sew up to the pocket and stop, go around the pocket and stop, and then come back up underneath the pocket and go down to the hem. That keeps from pinning down, tacking. It, it gets this little corner right here where the pocket attaches kind of caught. And I don't want to do that because it can change my side seam. What I will do is come back and do some straight stitching right in here at the top and the bottom of the pocket after I've done all the serging and um, neaten that up. And I'll show you how that looks, but we're gonna do both side seams. I've already searched my hem, so I don't have to worry about that. You can do that at the end if you want to. I am at my side seam coming up to the pocket. Now I'm gonna have the seam as flat as I can. I'm pushing the pocket kind of out of the way and I'm going to serge right up to the pocket and then off. You can see how I got close. I'm gonna come back with my sewing machine and I'm going to straighten this out right in here with the sewing machine. So now I'm at the top of my pocket and I'm pushing the dress out of the way. Whoop, get that pin out of there. And now I can sew off the pocket and I can see like right here, I'm not close enough. I can come back and stitch over that in a little bit. The main thing is getting this little corner right. So here's below the pocket and the pocket up two. And now I'm going to fold these together, matching up the edge, and I'm gonna sew up to the underarm. Okay, so here's our pocket, the below the pocket and above the pocket. And you can see it's not perfect, but it's not caught. It's all free motion. So what I'm going to do now is come in with my straight stitch and I'm going to start right here and I'm just going to straighten out. So I'm gonna come and stitch up this direction a little beyond the bottom of the pocket just to make it strong and um, keeps from the, they're like developing a little hole. Pockets take so much wear and tear. Then I'm going to come to the top of the pocket and kind of do the same thing. Press everything out of the side, out of the way. We're gonna start down here. And you, it's about an inch is what I'm doing. I'm into the pocket. Always backstitch pockets, you know, we're hard on them. And then back into my stitching here, backstitch. Hopefully you can see where I've just straightened out. Well, there we go. Hopefully you can see where I've just straightened out that stitching below and above the pocket. Let me show you the right side. All right, here is the pocket in the side seam. And this is where I've stitched above and below just to make it nice and even. It also makes it a little stronger. So now we have a nice pocket and it really hides. This is the back of the garment, this is the front. So if I turn this, you can see there's my edge stitching for my pocket on that front side. And now this is ready for a press and we're gonna move on to neckline. All right, I'm doing my little tiny shoulder seam. I've got it set at the 3 8 inch and I've just 
backstitched right at my um, where that notch would have been. I had a pin there. And then I'm just going to sew up to the top and backstitch again. Be careful when you get to these edges. The machine, especially if your needle's a little bit dull, will want to push it down or ball it up. And that is our little tiny shoulder seam. Before we do the neckline, we're going to finish off our little arm opening or arm holes. It recommends using a double needle. I happen to have a couple. I'm going to use this narrow one. I have a really wide one, and I think it's actually wider than my seam allowance is on this project. So we're gonna go with this smaller one. It is um, an 80 weight needle, and it's a number two as far as, I believe, the dimension of the um, of how far apart the needles are. So this is a double needle I'm going to use, which means you need two spools of thread. And I'll show you how to hook that up. We've pressed open our little shoulder. This is a tiny little shoulder that's pressed open. Everything else is pressed under. Put a few pins in the critical areas where it's going to want to move. So we're just going to twin needle around. I'll show you over the sewing machine. We're just gonna stitch it in. The thing with the twin needle is, though the top looks straight stitched, behind the bobbin zigzags between the two needles and you actually have stretch wherever you have twin needle. The nice thing about that is it also can be used for your hem, which I think I will do. Okay, so on my machine, I have a pop-up spool uh, holder here, so I popped it up and put on another spool of thread. So I have one here and one here. They're pretty much threaded the same. They come behind, but right here where the tension discs are, I have got one thread on one side of the tension disc and one thread on the other. They kind of come down together, up and around. Now, I threaded them separately. I did one whole needle and then the other, and then they come down through the tension bars down here and then in each needle. My, this one, which was my, my primary holder, is in the far left. This one is in the right needle. That's how it's set up. And other than that, it's ready to go. This is how the um, stitching looks. I do always do a test on the front and then on the back. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little tiny zigzag. It's a nice little finish. So I'm going to do this for the hem and for the armhole. I think I'm going to go ahead and hem it while I have this needle on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the armholes and then I'm gonna turn up and do my hem at the same time because I have the needle. Then I'll switch back to the straight stitch needle for the neckline. Okay, one more thing I forgot to say is make sure you put on a wider toe foot also so that you don't end up breaking off one of your needles if you're using a straight stitch foot. So now we're ready to sew. Take a few stitches, back stitch. Don't throw it over your pins, especially with a double needle. Just double your chances of hitting it. And that's it. You can kind of see how my fabric bounces in the um, foot, and that is because I don't have a bar across here to hold it down. I do have a foot like that, but then it's a little harder to see what I'm doing, so I'm sewing with the open toe foot. If you're struggling with the, with the bouncing, make sure you have a foot that has a bar across here that will give you more stability while sewing. Okay, so for the hem, it says fold up uh, the back side of the hem by 3 8 of an inch. And then we're gonna top stitch it with our twin needle. Um, search that edge because I don't like to have a raw edge if I can help it, so here's mine. And I fold it up more like half an inch. This, because of the knit, it just presses up so beautifully. It's really easy to work with. And then I'm going to um, sew it with my twin needle. I will be sewing, I want to sew so that I'm getting close to this edge. So I'm going to sew so I'm kind of like right in here. Um, you can, if you're re really good at lining things up and real precise with your pressing, you can sew so that you have, you have one needle on just the dress and one needle just on the hem, and that will give you a finish along there because it zigzags between. That's certainly an option. I would go with a little wider twin needle if you're going to do it, but you have to be careful because it can also cause a pin tuck, which you don't necessarily want to pin tuck hem. I went ahead and changed my foot. This one you can see has the bar in front. It gives it a lot more stability and I think it's just easier um, to sew with this soft knit. I'm starting at a side seam. I'm not worrying about back stitching because I'm sewing a circle. And that's how the hem is going to look front and back.
Now that the dress is together, all that's left is the neckline. I've hemmed it. I've got my little armhole openings done. How nice and full this is going to be. So fun. Okay, so now we're going to work on neckline. We're going to take our little neckline piece and we're going to sew the center back um, together. And then I'm going to sew the bottom edge. I'm going to seam finish it all the way around. So we have sewn our little back seam. <clears throat> and then I went ahead with the serger and I searched around this bottom edge um, to seam finish it. And now we're going to pin it on. We're going to start at the center back, pin it on at the center back, and pin it on the center front, and then pin in between. Here's mine. So you can see I've got the bottom edge serged. Here's my center back pinned on. Here's my center front pinned on, and now I'm just starting to pin all the way around. You can definitely just sew this at the sewing machine or serge it, whichever works for you. Um, we're making a casing. So once this is done, it's gonna get flipped over and we're gonna top stitch it around, leaving a little hole because we're gonna stick some elastic in it. All pinned in around the neckline, I'm just straight stitching around this edge, quarter of an inch, all the way around. Uh, you can cross your stitches if you want to, if you don't back stitch, either way, because it's a circle. So once it's sewn in, we're going to fold that casing to the back. Here's the front of my, or the outside, the right side of the garment. Here's the inside. So the whole casing goes to the back. I've pressed it, we're pinning it down, and we're gonna top stitch it in, leaving a little hole to get elastic in. They have a chart down here. You're gonna need one inch elastic and you're gonna cut it for your size. I'm gonna cut mine for um, eight and three quarters is what it recommends. Um, that's smaller than most heads, which is fine because it stretches to go over the head and then it tightens up around the neck. So we're gonna go ahead and cut our elastic. The way they show this is, so this is the center back seam and that's where they're leaving their little hole to open and close. And that's what I'm also going to do. Center back or shoulder is the best place to leave that little hole because you double stitch, or, you know, you cover your stitches on each end and it's less noticeable in the back or the shoulder. You never want it in the center front. So we're ready now to go to the sewing machine and just top stitch down our casing all the way around. If you like to put tags in, now would be a good time to put a tag on this back little collar piece unless you want to stick it on one of these seam lines. Um, but you could put a tag back here real quick before you do this stitching. Or you could even hang it, put it in this seam down here. Because of the shaping of this little neck facing, it fit beautifully. I've come all the way around. There's my little hole that I'm going to fish my elastic through. So we are on the final step. The dress is completely done. We have the neckline casing completed. You could use a little press. All right, we've added pockets. I'm showing you this is the front of the dress. This is the back. I've got my elastic cut. I'm gonna find a safety pin. And we're gonna now take our elastic with the safety pin in one end. And we are going to find that little hole that we left in our neckline casing. It should be in the very back. There's mine. And we're going to push through, um, push our elastic up inside that little hole. And we're going to start fishing it through. And what I always do when I um, work with a, an elastic casing like this is I take the other end of the elastic and I pin it down because the elastic is smaller than the casing. That's just the nature of the thing we're doing and that keeps me from losing the other end of my elastic inside this casing so we're going to just push 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 we've got some seams to go across and sometimes it kind of wants to get caught behind a seam so you'll just want to push towards the facing side and that will help you get around the night this casing if you sewed around an inch and an eighth to an inch and a quarter it'll be just wide enough for your inch wide elastic and it will give a nice um, tall sort of like collar effect. It'll make that neckline stand up nice because the elastic is high, it gives it a nice effect. The pattern has, um, you can make this exact same, it's the exact same sewing, but you could do a top instead. Um, there's a line um, when you cut it out, when you uh, trace off your pattern that shows for doing a top or a dress. It only has the two lengths, either a hip length top or a full length dress, but it would be easy to alter the length if you wanted to do um, something shorter. I'm doing mine a little above the ankle. So I'm all the way around my casing. Here's my two little ends. I'm gonna overlap them like this and sew them real good, back and forth, back and forth. Then I'm gonna pull it tight inside and I will sew up the little hole 
um, I'll just top stitch from end to end to sew it up. So let me get my elastic sewn together real quick. All right, so I've sewn over it nice and tight. I do both ends to make sure it uh, doesn't, you don't have any little flips or anything. You also wanna make sure that your elastic does not roll or twist in here, because that will show through and it will also be uncomfortable. Okay, I'm gonna pull this tight so this pulls to the inside. Okay, let's just give us a little tug, tug, tug. And there is our completed garment. It's completely done. Oh, I cannot wait to try this on. I have a feeling this is gonna be one of my favorite easy wear dresses. I will put it on and then I'm gonna to talk to you about some ideas I have for this pattern. I really like it. Wow, was this fast. Morning sew. I did the whole thing, um, not the making of the pattern, but I did all of the sewing in a morning. So before lunch, we have a dress. All right, let's head over and try it on. All right. I love every dress. I'm a dress gal, but I have to tell you, for ease of wear and ease of making and still being super cute, two thumbs up. Love this. And adding the pocket sends it all the way up the charts. So let me show you how cute this is. Look at how cool the skirt is. Such an easy sew. Here's the neck. This is comfy and easy, little beach dress, um, the way I have it made, but it would be easy to make this elegant if you did it in more of a uh, jersey knit or a silk knit, something like that. But let me show you with the belt. Now I have a white belt and I mislaid it, so let me show you. I have a butterfly belt, so we're gonna do it with that. Now these belts, I have a pattern, or I have a video for making these belts, so if you would like to make one too, um, click the link in the iCard or down in the description and here it is with the belt and I personally would wear it with the belt I think the belt just for my shape is exactly what I need it just slims it a little bit it gives me a little better shape really like it now because this is panels it would be so cute to make this with each panel a different color or maybe like a pattern and solids. Like you could really get creative with the design because of the way the seaming is on it. It's so cute. I really would like to do it where every panel is a different color. I think that would be really fun. All right, if you sew this up, if you've made this, I'd love to have a comment below and tell me what you think, what kind of fabrications you chose. I think the top would be super cute. I'm definitely gonna make it. The only thing I wish I would have done is the pocket is just a like one inch low. I think the pocket needs to go up maybe one inch for me, but that's it. See you next week for another fun video.